This is Shivani Patel, an application engineer at GoEngineer. Today we're going to use the Import Motion Loads tool to bring loads from a motion study into a simulation study. A previously set up contact sets between the gears, a motor around the right gear, and a contact set between the claws. Let's click play. Notice that the claws collide and then interfere. Doing a quick interference check between the claws shows that they collide around 1.67 seconds. Now I know the time I'm aiming for, so I go to Simulation, Import Motion Loads. Notice the automatic step size. We can choose Single Frame Steady and pick a particular time, or choose a Multiple Frame Steady that lets me choose a range of time. Since the step size is set, I will choose a range around the interference time. Now I just find the right cloud that I want to analyze and bring it into the Selected Components box. After clicking OK, it looks like nothing happens. The system is exporting the loads into the actual part, so to see them, I need to open the right clause part file. Alright, we're just giving it a few seconds to load, and here we are. Let's take a look at what the import motion loads created. Firstly, a linear static study for the first frame I designated is set up. All the motion loads on the part are treated as remote loads. SOLIDWORKS also created a design study with different scenarios for the other frames that I chose to export. Besides the variables, the system has also set up all the usual simulation results as monitor-only sensors under constraints. Uh, no goals have been set, but the user could always change this and turn it into an optimization study instead. Let's go back to the static study. Don't let yourself assume that the study is perfectly set up. All we've done is import loads. None of the fixtures or connections created by the mates in the assembly are converted. Let's run it anyway without making any changes to see what happens. Since I don't have any fixtures, this warning pops up talking about a significant imbalance. To prevent the part from flying away, SOLIDWORKS wants to turn on inertial relief. I'm going to allow it. So here's our first set of results. I can see that the arm twisting due to what must have been the motor trying to continue to rotate. I also know that near this moment in time, the face of the claw is colliding with its counterpart. And finally the claw connects to the assembly using screws through these holes. The screws are much stiffer than the ABS plastic, so we can assume they act as fixtures. The screws also pass through other plastic components that keep the claw's face from twisting, so to correctly add these fixtures, the claw needs an additional face that I'll set up using convert entities and split lines. If you don't want these split lines showing up in your drawing file, either run this simulation using a configuration of the part, or switch to tangent lines removed within the settings of your document or individual view. On all the flat surfaces that rest on other plastic pieces, a roller slider fixture should be added. So there's two up on top and two on the bottom, where it's being held in place. And finally, the last fixture should represent the claws colliding. So now that the fixtures are completed, I should turn off inertial relief. It is very important to remember to turn off inertial relief, Results will be skewed if there are fixtures, gravity, centrifugal, or thermal forces in your study. All right, I can see the stress concentration is building up as the motor bends the arm of the claw. While this produces very similar results to those that could be calculated within the motion study, using the customizable simulation study is more robust and definitely has the potential to be more accurate. This has been Shivani Patel with Go Engineer. I hope this video introduced you to importing motion loads into simulation and using the automatic studies to produce accurate results. Mm -hmm.